Right, you ready? Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Font 2. Now, if you tuned in last week, you know that this week we're talking about the Bloodline Timeline. We're taking it all the way back to the beginning. And this is probably going to be a two-episode, three-episode um, part um, little miniseries, but uh, we're going to start banging it out right now. Big quiche. We're taking it back to High Chief Peter Maivia. Now, he first signed in the WWE 1977, but we know he started wrestling in the 60s. What is your earliest memory of High Chief Peter Maivia? Uh, wow. I was only 12 years old. Uh, I remember uh, Uncle High Chief Peter Maivia used to come over to our home in San Francisco, California, which was my grandfather's place, Afonseca, uh, his father, right? And which is my mother's uh, brother's. So I remember Uncle Peter, when uh, they used to come to San Francisco during the daytime before they go to the evening show at the Cow Palace, they would come home. If you know, like when you come over to any Polynesian home, we're barbecuing, mm -hmm. we're cooking up a feast, and, you know, Uncle Alfonsica used to bring all the wrestlers and Peter, so they would all come over there, we'd all have a feast, and, you know, at 12 years old, you get to, you know, see all these wrestlers around, and, you know, they're all having a good time and so forth, but then during the evening time, we would all go with, you know, Uncle Peter and uh, Uncle Alfonsica to the Cow Palace, and then next year, you know, I'm seeing Uncle Peter fight Pat Patterson. You know, or Ray Stevens, or the, you know, Uncle Alfred Seek of fighting the other cats. So, it, it, my memory of uh, of uh, Uncle High Chief was on a personal happy guy. Mm -hmm. Was a family guy that loved to play his ukulele, and he always liked to sing some more songs. Really? Yeah. So he was like an entertainer. On I could have saw him made his own album. Probably. Really? I think so. Well, he was also an actor. He was an actress. Yeah. He was in a James Bond movie. Come on, how cool is that? You know what? He was one of the first pro wrestlers in a Hollywood movie. Mm. Uh, was uh, High, uh, High Chief, Chief Peter Maivia? Yeah. Um, kind of so, stumbled there. <laughs> well, I mean, those drinks are really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stay the stay the course. Stay the course. <laughs> So he was a Hollywood, yeah. Yes, sir. Movie star. Yes, sir. And not only that, he was a stunt coordinator on, on that flick. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know what? Um, if you can, because he was really close with Afa and Sika's father, right? So they yeah. were uh, blood brothers. Right. So um, can you tell us a little bit about Afa and Sika's father and maybe their relationship? Okay. So my grandfather, Anwai uh, Tonai, that's where you get the last name, Anwai. Um, so, Grandpa, I'm going to call him Papa, you know. Papa paved the way in San Francisco, California, as far as uh, being the first preacher, uh, Samoan preacher. And uh, him and my grandma, you know, when they came from Samoa, they'd open up the first San Francisco congregational uh, church um, in Sagamore. And, uh, you know... Uh, during that time when they moved from the islands here was uh, uh, in comes uh, High Chief Peter Maivia. And the story is with Peter, I think it was, uh, you know, uncle comes uh, into the picture. I'm talking about High Chief Peter Maivia. Come into the picture and then is adopted to my grandfather. In comes uh, High Chief Peter Maivia. Now, High Chief Peter Maivia was a wrestler before Uncle Alpha and Sika. So they would go, and I, I guess they would, you know, you know, watch some of uh, Peter's matches and so forth. And I guess they used to wrestle up in, you know, sometimes in uh, Hawaii, sometimes in uh, Hayward, California, which there was a promoter by the name of Roy Shire. Wow. So Roy Shire is uh, the promoter that ran around the Bay Area. And this is when High Chief Peter Maivia was in the game. Now, during that time, because of that relationship with, with uh, Grandpa, on I am tonight, um, kind of became High Chief's, like, father, right? And then that's how, you know, the, uh, the brothers, the label of being brothers, 
uh, came about with Uncle Alpha and Sika and, and Uncle uh, Peter Maivia. So what a fitting name years later, Bloodline, because mm-hmm. that's really what it is. We are connected through blood. Sir. Um, Grandpa's related to uh, Peter's uh, uh, parents uh, back in uh, Samoa. So mm-hmm. there's been a relationship there before it came to the kids, meaning High Chief Peter Maivia and, and uh, into the whole, you know, Alpha and Sika mm-hmm. uh, line. And from that that branch, that's like the star of the branch of our Christmas tree. Yes, sir. Right? Because it starts there, High Chief, and then splits off to Uncle uh, you know, Alpha and Sika. Um, before we get to them... Yeah. Did uh, did you ever hear the story of Peter Maivia's wife uh, jumping in the ring? Because I guess uh, he uh, oh. the story goes uh, he you know he kayfabed her, and he didn't tell her that you know that it was a work. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> apparently at the Cow Palace there was wow. a, there's a famous story uh-huh. of uh, I don't know who it was, what, but they were putting what? heat on him, and she jumped in the ring and hit the dude with a wooden shoe. Do you recall this story? Well, that's true. Yes, sir. But that's not only the first time. I've seen that many a time happen with really? Auntie Leah. You know, really? Auntie, Auntie Leah didn't play. Really? Yeah, she didn't play. She was, uh, she's been around the business, been around. A wrestling promoter, too. Know, yeah, you know, and she's been around, uh, you know, uh, uncles and, and high chief for many a year. So, you know, she was, she was, uh, she was a tough cookie. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I thought that was a pretty bad rip to not to smarten uh, Auntie up. But I, I would have, I feel that she was already smart, mm-hmm. but maybe something that she was watching uh-huh. that maybe didn't go as it's supposed to look. Oh, like, or okay. Maybe it was a stiff shot to Peter's head or whatever the case may be. But I, I've seen my uncles laugh many times when people potato them. Really? Potato meaning meaning really hit them hard. Like, you know, yes. mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, wrestlers come in there, they they do do what they do, and, you know, they 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 some don't know how to perfect their craft, and they just take a shot, and unfortunately they ran into the wrong person. Yes, sir. And that's how you get a receipt. Yes, sir. You know? We're moving on to 1979. Often, Sika make their way to the WWF. Um, what is your earliest memory of, of your uncles off in Sika. Boy, you're asking me all these questions. I was 14, 13 years old. <laughs> My earliest memories, I, I'm in American Samoa. Mm-hmm. I'm going to school at 14 years old there. Uh, I believe I was in uh, ninth grade or something like that back in home. And, you know, back home in the islands, uh, uh, you know, every Sunday, wrestling was a big sport to us. And uh, TV was shut down, I think it's 8 p.m. at night. Mm-hmm. Everything. Everything, they'll, they'll, the last national Samoan anthem song will come on at 8 p.m., meaning that's like it's time for you to go to sleep now. Mm-hmm. But so during 6 o'clock, you know, this is, you know, in the morning we go to church, and by the time we come home from 10 o'clock service, we're home by 12, 1 p.m., we're having dinner, which we call a kongai. Mm-hmm. That's like a brunch where all the family gets together and feast and enjoy each other's company. And then... You know, we're relaxing, having some coffee and some, you know, some cocoa pangi popo, some cocoa bread and mm. you name it, cocoa alesa, the cocoa rice. <sighs> and now we're all set, setting the tone. By 5 o'clock, we're waiting for that 6 o'clock. And 6 o'clock was WWF wrestling back in the day. And now we would see Captain Lou Albano lead out from the islands of Samoa. Wow. Blah, 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 have fun, sing up. And, man, the whole village, you know, if anybody was sitting in our home, you know, the whole village, you knew they had the whole island. You knew they had all their TVs on at 6. And so that was my first time of seeing my uncles on TV. And I was so proud to go. I couldn't wait to tell, you know, everybody at school that those are my uncles. You know, even people that came over from from the same village that didn't have TVs, they would come in our living room and, you know, we would say, oh, that's that's my uncle, that's my uncle. And, you know, we'd end up arguing with the person next to us because just not your uncle. That's not. <laughs> we'd end up trying to move Uncle Alf and Sika there, right? But, yeah, they were the first. That was my first experience of uh, seeing my uncles, you know, in the wrestling ring and so forth. And 
we were so, so damn proud, man, uh, you know, to be able to see our own people uh, on an international stage of professional wrestling, mm. it's TV in America, for that matter. And uh, it, it was like, you know, I couldn't wait to finally really meet them in person and to be able to, you know, just, you know, see how they really are and so forth until I got a chance to move. Uh, my parents moved us from uh, Samoa, American Samoa, to San Francisco. And then that's where I really got a taste of all the wrestlers that I seen on TV mm -hmm. because now it was it was a thing all the time. When my, bro when my mother's brothers were coming, meaning Alfon Sika, to the Bay Area, they would call their sister, and of course their parents were there, you know, to make a feast. And when they, we didn't know who was coming. Yes, sir. But when all we knew is, you know, wrestlers, anything we can get a free meal or, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm assuming it's, it's still like that today. But, oh, yeah. But anytime you can get a, a meal, especially a Polynesian meal, mm. oh, you knew they was coming. And we had, that was the excitement for us because we wanted to see who was coming over. And guess who came over? Who came over? Andre the Giant. I get to meet Andre the Giant. For the first time, I was like, man, 14 years old, maybe 13. Wow. Yeah. I got Ray Stevens. He was one. Uh, Rocky Soul Man Johnson. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I didn't know that he was going to be my uncle. <laughs> right? Yes, sir. So that was cool. You know, Pat Patterson. Was, but Kamala. Man. Oh, we used to see him, like, bite the you know people on TV. Mm-hmm. And now I'm watching him bite a rib or, you know, some barbecue chicken that my mom made <laughs> at the barbecue and, and speak perfectly great English. Right. From Tennessee, baby. Wow. From Tennessee, nice to meet you. My name is James Harris. Kamala. <laughs> Nicest guy in the world, though. Wow. Yeah, the wrestlers were definitely different, man. They're not what you see on TV. And I'm just speaking from my experience as a 14-year-old kid to be able to see these stars and then all of a sudden, you know, you see them in person and they're not like what they are on TV. But then when you see them in the ring that night, you know, they they were so good, Joey, that I got pissed off at Pat Patterson. I got pissed off at Kamala the beating up Andre the Giant, mm -hmm. you know, because they did it so damn good, right, that I believed that they were out there like they hated each other. Really? Yeah. And then come back in the locker room and got a chance to, you know, you know, do what we do, Samoan kids. You know, we go and we do do fouls like, you know, means chores. Yes, sir. Even though we're in the locker room, but we mm -hmm. were grabbing chairs. Like mm -hmm. We see them coming back, they're tired. You know, they're blowed up. Mm -hmm. We grab a chair for them, get a towel, grab them a beer, whatever the case may be. But yes, sir. We, we, were, we were blessed to have that experience, which, man, if... The kids nowadays or the wrestlers nowadays, the indies, if you can only experience something like that, man, it'll change your life how you see this business. You know, it, it, it takes a certain human being to do what we do. You know, not everybody's smart in this industry. But once you become a wrestler, you get that wrestling smarts, Joey. Yes, sir. Right? You, you can adapt to anything. When you're going to Hollywood or you're going to any job, a wrestler's mentality can adapt because we see things coming a mile away. We learn how to adapt. And when you talk about who is the best promoter in this industry, if you don't say yourself, you ain't learned a damn thing. Yes, sir. The best promoter is yourself. Yes, sir. Right? Your brand. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say this, that wrestlers are the hardest working sports athletes in the world in everything that has to do with entertainment because that's just how we're built and how we're trained. Yes, and sir. I was underneath that tree as Alfon Sika, Rocky Soul Man Johnson. Wow, what a tree. There was the bloodline before the bloodline. Yes. Come on. 
And you know what? Your uncle's always like, uh, all the coolest wrestlers in the world seem to gravitate towards your uncles, like at these barbecues. And you always see the old pictures. Your uncles had like super swag back then. They had the nice hair and yeah. they had the track suits with mm -hmm. their name on the track suits. Oh, yeah. Brandon back then, man. Absolutely. Well, that's one thing. I don't mean to cut you off, yes, but, sir. but I will. <laughs> Drop bombs on them. Uh, yeah, you, that's one thing. Let me let me go ahead and set the record straight about the dang. Okay, you can go ahead and cut the balls <laughs> off. You're drowning me out. <laughs> that's one thing about the Samoans, the bloodline, right? Yes, sir. You talk about swag. Mm -hmm. you know, like we might look like like that on TV, mm -hmm. you know, the dreadlocks and even with the thong, people thought you, you know, oh, mm -hmm. what type of smell is that? We talked about this on the last episode. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the matter is, man, we just cocoa butter fresh. <laughs> we come from where coconuts are made. You know what I mean? Ray, I mean, there's nothing but coconuts and all. Tell me any Polynesian island you go to don't have coconut. Ooh. And now not only you have that, mm -hmm. which is great for you to eat, but mm -hmm. also the liquid that's in there mm -hmm. is 100% good for your body. Ooh. And now we see it all where they got cocoa butter. Is that what you put on oil. before the match? I, I rub that coconut oil. Oh, yes. So I'll not mix, baby I'll oil. Mix, not baby oil. Never baby oil. Okay. Coconut oil. Do you, you see that cooking coconut oil? You can get them at Costco. There's a plug for Costco. Or you can get them there or Target, another plug. Or Walmart. You can get them there, right? But I mix that up with mm -hmm. olive oil. Okay. You know, when you when you 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 touch olive oil before. Yes, sir. Yeah. So when you put that olive oil, it's mm -hmm. just so smooth. But here's a trick. When you come out the shower, you want to just dap your body. Okay. Everything. Dap it. Dap it real good. And then you take that coconut mm -hmm. oil, mm -hmm. get a little bit of that uh, olive oil, mesh it together, and you you rub that on while your body is still somewhat, somewhat wet. Okay. You watch. Five minutes later, your whole body is so soft. You know, people wonder why when they shake my hands. I'm a wrestler. Mm -hmm. When you shake my hands, man, my hands is just... Smooth. Smooth. It's just, just smooth like I am. Smooth operator. All the time. Drop bombs on them. So we talked about uh, who the, who the uh, toughest wrestlers are, and you said, number yep. one, Sika. Yep. So out of Afa and Sika, you, you would say, would you say... Uh, Sika is the tougher uh, uncle, and if so, why? No, I, I wouldn't say Sika is the tougher. Okay. Right? I, I got to watch what I say here because, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I still, I'm still i still frightened of my uncles. <laughs> <laughs> Respect and all that, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But let, let, let me just put both of them tough, mm -hmm. right? But my uncle Sika... You know, Uncle Sika is the type that he don't play. Mm. Like, he'll fly off the handle. You look at, like, we're walking, just walk into a bar or whatever. You look wrong to say me. Yes, sir. Or you're looking wrong at the, one of our cousins, and you're not even talking or looking at. But he would just look and see, and it looks like you were saying something to her or to me. And he would be the type of jump without. Ooh. Now, Uncle Alpha would be the, he was always kind of negotiator, the negotiator, right? To, just to kind of make sure before he jumps. And when he does jump, hey, man, let me tell you, I've been slapped one time by my uncle, and not because he was mad or because I did anything. And uh, Samu will testify this to our first dark match in WWE. We got called up, and we were getting ready to go on the dark match, and 15,000 people strong, man. You can imagine how we we felt, right? The norm people would be nervous, not me and my cousin. We were like, this is it, man. Let's get out here and do this. Like, we were happy and fired up to be there. Yes, sir. And so while we're sitting there, you know, I guess my uncle didn't realize how happy we were there. He says, okay, the music hit. He said, she ready? Let's go out there and do it. And then right before we get ready to walk out to the curtain, he pulled both of us back in through the curtain and looked at us and slapped me, boom! Slapped Sammy, boom! And we're just like, oh, s***. I said, let's go do it. Did you imagine we walking out the damn curtain damn near like <laughs> we just got slapped by my uncle. And, you know, he's got big hands. 
And dude, that was probably the hardest, hardest slap I've ever felt in my entire life. Oh my God. Yeah, damn near broke my jaw. I, I think broke did break my jaw. So yeah, no no doubt about it. Both so, your uncles, world renowned, world love, world respected. Yeah, we know all about it. I'd have to say that's equal tough to answer. Yes, your sir. Ab- absolutely. Um, so we're we're going to 1983. Damn. Next bloodline member signing with WWF is your brother, the Tonga Kid. Hey, TK. TK all, all day. Go hey, oh, give us some hands for TK Man, all day. So, yes, sir. I love your brother so much. I know you do, Joe. Yes, sir. I, I love yeah. TK so much. And, and every time I see him, and he's like an older, bigger version of Jacob. Yeah. And uh, nothing but smiles for miles uh, anytime I deal with your brother. So let me ask Big Keish, um, your brother, he signs with the WWF, and he's like one of the youngest wrestlers ever to yeah. headline Madison Square Garden. You had to be... Uh, I was there. You were there when you I, were... I was there. Please tell us about uh, so, uh, it. So, TK, for the fans that are listening, that's the Tonga Kid, who is my younger brother. Uh, he's also the older brother of the late Umaga. And he is the father of that sensational, absolutely amazing talent free agent that's out there. Mm-hmm. His name is Jacob Fatu. And so, uh, coming back to the Tonga Kid... Uh, the Tonga Kid was in the business before I am. Uh, this is uh, this is all they never been said before on any podcast, and uh, you know I want to let it let it out there today to be able to share with a lot of our fans out there that you know the Tonga Kid was uh, the one that that made me change my life to really made me wanted to do this professional wrestling. You know I was a fan of my younger brother uh, during the time he broke into the business. Uh, he uh, had semi training. Uh, he was just thrown in there. He he'd work out with Uncle Alvin Sika, uh, occasionally with Peter Maivia, and now come in Uncle Rocky Johnson. Mm-hmm. So they all were there in Hampton, Connecticut. Hampton, Connecticut's maybe about an hour and a half uh, of, away from Stanford, Connecticut, which is WWE's uh, uh, office. So the Tonga Kid. Um, Flew me out. I was going to school in San Francisco. Flew me out. Big baller, right? <laughs> <laughs> flew me out, first class. Ooh. I landed out there in uh, uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy. I've never been to New York ever. Never have I ever flew out to anywhere as far as uh, to the East Coast. But my brother wanted me to come to watch him perform. And so when I finally got there... I didn't know he was performing at Madison Square Garden. So I come through the back now once again. You know, I'm a little bit older now. But I see some of these guys that, you know, came to the house in San Francisco. You know, Kamala, Andre, all these cats, right? So I'm seeing a lot of these cats here. Chief J. Strombo. I can hear the bells walking (laughs) in the hallway. (laughs) King, king, king. I look around, it's Jules and, you know, Chief J. You know, all Uh And I, it was like all these characters, man. I look around, I can smell a uh, freaking cigar smell. And it, it's, I look to the left, and it's Arnold, Sch- you know, Arnold Scullin. Uh-huh. He's over there smoking. Hey, how you doing, cat? So Arnie used to be the guy to pay people. So anyhow, TK puts me up in this VIP seat. Now all of a sudden, you know, I hear, you know, the music hit. You know, uh, here comes, uh, you know, Piper. Here comes Bob Orton. Here comes, uh, all of a sudden, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Out comes my brother. Out comes Jimmy Snooker. Mm. So this was that angle. Jimmy Snooker, I want Piper. Right? And so I'm actually watching this, Joe. Wow. I'm looking around. What Madison Square Garden holds 15, 16,000 sold out. And I'm watching my brother who's 16 years old out there dancing, you know, with these iconic wrestlers, the Superfly, you know, Piper, Bob Orton, Randy Orton's father. And he was out there, dude, he was so over how they built, they call him the kid. He was so over that when he was out there, dude, I mean, people damn near, you know, with him and Jimmy, 
when they were down selling, people damn near jumped in the ring. And it was so smart, again, kind of going off the subject a little bit, but I just taking you into the match. Yes, sir. It was so smart. You're watching this match, and the heat was so heavy that soon as they kind of felt people, like, you know, trying to jump into the ring, they called the comeback to, you know, a little hope spot for them. These guys fought them back, came out of nowhere, boom, 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 real quick, off the top row splash, one, two, three, the Tonga Kid gets it. They all come out, man, and I just sat there. And here's what really turned the page for me. Sir. Because when I came back and, I, you know, I was, you know, I was green. <laughs> I wanted to take pictures. <laughs> my brother, <laughs> my brother was looking at me, shh, shh, hey, you can't, can't take pictures with you, can't take and I was getting mad at him. What are you talking about, man? I just want to take, you know that. But he was kayfabing me. He didn't tell me, right? He just smart me up. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was, I was great. What do you want to take I, a picture with? Yeah, I want to take with Andre Piper, the Giant. I want to take Andre the Giant. And then Mr. Wonderful was there, Paul Ordoff. So I want to take a picture with uh -huh. those cats. And then I come up to him. So he's trying to kayfabe me. So he wouldn't let me take pictures with any of those guys. Mm -hmm. But then he would want, he said, come, come with me. So I went in. So now I'm going to get... I walk in there in the office, there's Arnie. Uh -huh. So right next to Arnie, he's got a deck of cards because he loves playing gin. He's got an ashtray with cigar. The damn near cigar is probably like, he probably had some bud in there or something. I don't know. Really? Because Arnie was always happy. Back then? Back then. He was always happy. Must have been that dirt weed back then. There's something that was in that cigar. If mm -hmm. you didn't see Arnie with a cigar, mm -hmm. it's like the Godfather back. You know, you seen that guy talk with the cigar just hanging there, mm -hmm. but it looked like it almost fall off? <laughs> yeah, that's him. Man, he opened up that suitcase, $100 bills. Wow. So back in the day, he asked for advance. Mm hmm. Uh, they gave the kid, I think they gave him like $3,000 advance. I, I just watched 100, one, two. And, and keep in mind, he's a 16-year-old kid. Yes, sir. Right? I'm only one year older than he is. So I'm watching this, and then, you know, he's getting past it. That's your pay. He said, nah, this is just advance. This is for the night. This is for me and you. Oh, so wow. we went out, dude, and we mm -hmm. did it. He took me, man, and this is something I'll never, ever forget. And this is when I knew my brother wasn't big-headed to the, to the industry. We went, we walked the streets of New York, and there was a lot of homeless people there. And we walked into this deli where we were getting our sandwiches. He ended up buying like 20, 20 big sandwiches. Wow. Came out with that. That was part from that 3000 mm -hmm. He didn't have no credit cards or nothing. He, this kid couldn't read or write or nothing. And he came with all those sandwiches. Now I'm walking down my first experience in New York City, and I'm holding damn about 10 big, you know, 10 big deli sandwiches. And I'm walking down, and he's just grabbing them off of my hands and passing it to certain people, man. And I was looking at him like, that's all right, man. That's yes, all right. You know, yeah. That's your blessing there. Yeah. But he, to this day, mm -hmm. he is the youngest pro wrestler at the age of 16 to 17, 16, to be a part of a sellout crowd. They were main event, him, Jimmy versus Piper and, and Orton. Wow. To this day, yes, sir. that record stands. Hashtag bloodline. Ha fans, uh, Come on. go on the YouTubes and look up the Islanders, his work with the King Aku and Bobby Heenan and amazing. the Bulldogs. Oh, man, it's just such amazing work. Uh, Keish, we're going to wrap up this conversation on the Bloodline timeline. When we pick it back up next week, we're going to start in 1992 when the head shrinkers signed to the WWF. You got, right. you got any last words, Big Keish? Hey, remember this. It's free to be kind to one another and always, always smarten up. <laughs>